Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our weekly videos. Now in this video, I thought we'll talk about what we can put inside a first aid kit. Now first aid kits come in lots of different shapes and sizes and they're all supposed to be suitable for your needs and everything inside needs to be in date. And ideally you need to be checking it regularly, A, to make sure it's not being used and also to make sure things are in date. So I thought I'm going to take this horrible, gloomy day, wet, miserable outside, to go through a deep dive at this first aid kit and kind of show you what the things are put inside there. Because I might say put dressings in there, put foil blankets in there, put trauma things in there, but you're thinking, oh, I don't really know what they are. You know, do you, does anyone know the differences between these three things? They kind of look the same, but they are actually a little bit different. So I thought we could open them up and show you what actually they are and when we would use them. So don't forget to watch the video all the way through to the end so you understand what this looks like, what this looks like, what this looks like when I open them all up. Go on, without further ado, let's delve into this first aid kit then. Now, I'm going to be talking about a kind of a workplace first aid kit because here in the UK, workplace first aid kits are green with a white cross and suitable for our needs. But you might have one to take around holiday with you. You might have one at home for your family and friends to use. Um, mine all tend to be this colour because everything inside there should be suitable for everyone and anyone to use. So you might have a few additional things you might have for your family that you might take on holiday, such as medication, but in a workplace setting, you're not going to put inside a workplace first aid kit. So we'll talk about a few extra things you might put in, you know, for a family trip if you're going on holiday, or even for yourself if you're going on holiday. So what I thought I'd do, we'll go through some of the items that we can put inside a first aid kit that you might not actually know what they are. You know, we use the word bandages and dressings and expect everybody to know what they actually are. So let's just take these then. These here is what some people might call a dressing or a bandage. I would call them a wound dressing because here you've got a bit of gauze and a bandage attached. Now you could have this separately. So you could have it in different sizes. So there's a dressing or a bit of gauze, large one. And then we've got a smaller version of them as well. And then you could have a bandage like this that kind of um, wraps around these to secure them in place. Or you could get a bit of tape and you could tape these to places. But um, some people might be allergic to tape. So these are great as a bit of gauze. Um, you can also use them, like, let me just open up this one here for you just so you can see. Because these would be good um, if you have maybe a bleed in the mouth or a cut somewhere here. You could just, a bit of gauze, if you can just see that there. And all you could do is just fold it up and you could bite on it, put it in your mouth to stop a tooth from bleeding, or you could just put it on your arm like so, and then get one of these bandages and wrap it around to secure it into place. So that's kind of what I mean by a bit of gauze, and we get them of different sizes. Or you might just decide actually, let's just get one that's purpose built for you. So this is a medium sized one, and we have them in large as well. And I've also got somewhere down here, um, a finger dressing one here which is the same thing, okay? So I'll open that one in a second, but let's have a look at this one here. It's a medium, same as this, which is a large. We'll always open them up. Remember, we always check the date to make sure it's still in date. And here, you will find that you've got a bandage. And if you unroll it, you will find there's a bit of gauze, exactly the same as this. And this bit of gauze will have two sides. Let me move it closer as you can see. So it's got a shiny side, and then it's got the side the bandage goes over. Now you don't want to put this side on the wound because the bandage will stick. It's always this side you'll put on the wound. Um, I'm going to try and do it on myself. So let's say I've got it here on my arm. And then all you need to do is unroll the bit that's rolled up, cover the bottom of the dressing, and then you'll cover the top of the dressing and just keep rolling it around. There we go. So you can see the actual dressing is all covered. And then I will tie a nice pretty bow there. So that's a medium sized dressing. And I would tend to have quite a lot of these in a first aid kit because they're quite versatile. You can actually make them smaller as well. So if you wanted to make it smaller, you would just fold it back on itself. So good for a head injury. Or again, you can make it even smaller like that. You can even cut the bandage off the end and use it for a mouth injury, like I showed you with a smaller bit of gauze. So I love medium sized dressings because it's got the bit of gauze and the bandage attached. So it saves you fiddling around with two lots of things in a first aid kit, you just grab a medium dressing. Now you do have to be careful that you don't get confused between a medium dressing and what we call a conforming bandage. Because this is a conforming bandage and it looks 
quite similar as opposed to, and there's another medium dress. There's loads of different manufacturers of these, but they look quite similar and they're not. One's the one I've just shown you and the other one is literally just a bandage. So here, so it's just the bandage, which you would use in addition with that, I'm just gonna roll all of it so you can all see. There we go. So you would use that with this. But one point to mention is you wouldn't really unroll it all the way because then you find it very difficult to be able to secure it in place. I always keep it rolled up and as I'm rolling around, then you would um, unroll it if you make sense, if that makes sense at all. Um, just make sure you don't put that directly onto an open wound. You could use this by itself if someone's maybe sprained an ankle in order to be able to compress that joint to keep it nice and sturdy. So that's kind of when I would use a conforming bandage by itself. It's maybe a sprained ankle, uh, it would even a sprained wrist, just to support it further until you seek medical help. Then we've got this finger dressing, same idea as the medium dressings, um, but it's just a bit smaller. So just to show you what it looks like, just open it up. Again, always checking the date. Now. There's nothing wrong in a home if things are out of date, um, but the manufacturer cannot guarantee things will be sterile if they're out of date. However, I'd much rather use something that was sterile once than something that's very dirty. But if you are in a workplace, um, you know, you can get people to come around and check to make sure everything is in date. So do check your packaging and make sure things are in date. So here's our finger dressing. And if I unroll this, you'll find exactly the same idea. You've got a bit of bandage and then you've got a tiny little bit of gauze there. And they've got something you can secure into place with. So if I've got a cut on my finger, I'm just going to place a bit of gauze there. And then all I will do will be wrap this around nice and tight. Yeah, in order to keep it secure, I'll probably go over the top of it as well. Wrap it around like so. Undo the bit of tape. Now I'm not sticking the tape to my skin. I will just tape it to the bandage like that. So there, straight away, you've got a nice dressing on a finger. That's really good if I cut my finger open. So that's my finger dressing. Exactly the same as I've had a cut on the arm, cut on the head, cut on the leg. I would still be able to use just a different size dressing to suit my needs. So wound dressings are what you've got a bit of gauze and the bandage attached to them. Okay? Or you can do it separately with a bit of gauze and with that compression bandage that I showed you earlier. So you can adapt things and what you put in there is completely up to you and it's suitable for what you need. Just going to remove this. Um, always make sure that you always wear, if you're dealing with someone else's blood, it's always a good idea to put a pair of gloves on. And gloves can come in different sizes. And gloves can come in different packaging as well. So you might get something like this. It clearly tells you it's a pair of gloves in there. You might get something like this. Um, and gloves are all different colours. You might have blue ones, grey ones, white ones. Just always make sure you put your gloves on before dealing with someone else's bleed. What else do we have? We've got these alcohol-free wipes as well. So we've got this one, which is a, a wound cleansing wipe. And this one's an alcohol-free wipes. Again, it's just different manufacturers packaging them up differently. But it is literally a water wipe. Alcohol-free, sterile solution. Now, I personally don't like wipes, especially if someone's fallen over outside. It's like sandpaper if someone's got lots of dirt in the wound. And the best thing really to do is go and get some sterile solution. And you might have things like this inside a first aid kit. These are little test tubes. You might also have it as a big water bottle as well. And all you need to do is tear one of the test tubes off, take the top off just by squeezing it, and then you can clean the wound with water. Now this is great if you're working outside, you know, if you're going for a picnic with some friends in the park, you wouldn't necessarily need this if you're in a home situation when you've got your tap at home. But the good things to have, I quite like them for eye wash as well if you're cleaning something out of somebody's eye, quite good for using them. Um, and then you might also find, let me have a look what we've got here, these things here. Now this is what we call a face shield. Now face shields are great, and we did a video about that previously. Um, there's different types of face shields you might find in a first aid kit. You might get something flat like that, you might get a little key ring, and inside that little key ring, when I open it up, I've got a kind of a face shield that you might use, so when you have to do rescue breasts, that goes over someone's mouth and for face really, and then you just blow in through this little bit. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. So we just open it up like this. And out pops this flat thing. Open it up. And da -da. there we go. Resuscitation face shield that will go over the casualty's mouth 
or face so you give breasts there so people think that they can sometimes get confused with these because they might look like a pair of gloves and people also confuse them with wipes as well so if you ever had to give rescue breasts to someone do go looking for the packaging it might look like that but it might also look like this it's looking for a face shield a pocket mask something along those lines that will protect you um, other bandages you might also consider in a first aid kit would be these ones, triangular bandages. Triangular bandages, otherwise known as slings. So when you open it up, I'll just open this one up, here we go. You've got a triangular shaped bandage. I don't particularly like the material of this one. You do get some um, more cottony like material. But when I open this one up, it will be in the shape of a triangle, depending on which way you look at it here. And this will be great for making a sling which will go like that, over the shoulder there, Ooh, and you'll tie it in place there. Obviously, you probably wouldn't do it on yourself, you'd be doing it on somebody else, um, and that will be making a sling for someone who's maybe broken their arm. If you want to see how to do slings, I'll leave the video below, and also you can just click the link above for you as well. And for those are slings. Oh, so many things in this first aid kit. Right, we've also got burns dressings. Now, Burns dressings come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Again, we've got kind of these versions, another version here, we might have a Burns dressing. And we've also got this smaller one as well. Now, I've got a big issue with Burns dressings because Burns dressings should really be the secondary treatment. And the first treatment for Burns is to cool it under cold water for at least 20 minutes. And it even says actually on the back of here, that it must be make sure you wash the wound and with cold water or cool water for approximately 20 minutes. It even tells you that on there. Um, and these will be then used as a secondary treatment that you'll put on the burn in order to protect it before you go and seek medical help. Now, medical help can be going to the chemist, it can be going to local doctors, it can go to A&E, just depends on how bad the burn is. And the issue with having these in first aid kits is that not everyone is a trained first aider. And somebody might burn themselves, let's say in the kitchen, they open a first aid kit and they go, what can I use on this burn? They see something with burn on there and then just put it directly onto the wound. And actually that can sometimes make things worse. So ideally, if you can, you're gonna use water from your tap, um, ideally. If you have no running water, because maybe you're out for a walk in the forest, you've gone camping, there's not enough uh, running water, then this will be the next best alternative again making sure someone's not allergic to the substance they've got this kind of smaller version is just literally a gel um, that you would just put onto the burn and then you can maybe put a dressing like this over the top and then secure it into place with one of those bandages we showed you earlier but i'd much rather cool it down in the cool water and that should always be the preferred treatment for burns and again i'll leave the video for you below in the links so you know how to be able to treat a burn but these will be great if you have no running water. If you have running water, get to that tap, okay? And um, plasters then. You're gonna have lots of different shapes and sizes of plasters and maybe different colors. You know, if you work in the kitchen, you might wanna have blue plasters. Um, but it's always good to have a, a choice of plasters so you can be able to treat most type of wounds that are small. You know, if it's a biggish wound, you go for one of those dressings we showed you earlier, um, or even the finger dressings. Me personally, I don't like plasters. I think they fall off too easily. And also you need to make sure someone's not allergic to them. I'd much rather use that finger dressing I showed you or one of these dressings on a wound rather than sticking something to someone else's skin or even to my skin. It just never stays on. Um, but plasters are great. Just always make sure someone's not allergic to them. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, foil blankets. These are, these are good. Now there's different manufacturers again of foil blankets. And these are great. Now I love foil blankets, but people do use them incorrectly. Now, if I open this up like this, here we go. It's nice and small, isn't it? As soon as I open it up, I'll never be able to get it back away again. Now this is gonna be used in order to be able to keep somebody nice and warm. <laughs> Looks like I'm going out for the night. <laughs> so this is gonna be used to keep me warm. Now, if I'm warm already, this is fantastic to use. If I am cold, however, this is gonna keep me cold. And this is where people use them incorrectly. Try not to throw them around someone as hypothermic or someone that has fallen into cold water because they're gonna be cold. And you put this on them and it's gonna keep them cold. 
So what you need to do first is warm them up. Remove wet clothing, warm them up with blankets, jackets, cuddles, and then wrap them up in this to keep them nice and warm. Put that down on the floor now, otherwise it's gonna crack them all the way through. So people do use them correctly. I would also use them if I was um, found someone outside on the pavement and they're unconscious, I might lay this on the pavement and then roll them onto it and then throw some jackets over them and then keep them warm in this. Just think of it as a thermos flask. Thermos flask is keeping the temperature of the liquid inside there. What it doesn't do is warm it up. So if you put cold water in a thermos flask, it's not gonna make it a boiling hot coffee or tea by lunchtime. It will keep it at that same temperature. So that's what this does. And then also in every first aid kit, there is always a leaflet or a manual that says what to do in emergency, because not everyone is a trained first aider. And therefore, you might just wanna look up how to be able to help save someone's life. And then here, there'll be lots of information for you. But other things you can put in a first aid kit, I mean, I've got lots of ice packs in the one I have and use when I'm teaching outside because head injuries, bee stings, um, sprained ankles, they're quite common. So, hair, so ice packs would be quite good to use in those circumstances. You might also want to put something like a trauma dressing. I've got one here. A trauma dressing or a hemostatic dressing or a tourniquet. Those kind of things would be used for catastrophic bleeds. So if you thought you worked in a high risk situation where someone's more likely to get a catastrophic bleed, you might consider putting them in your first aid kit. And um, you might also want some tape that you could put inside a first aid kit if you're not very good at tying things or safety pins if you're not very good at making those bows. So you can just secure them in place with safety pins or tape. And um, just looking what else I might have here. <laughs> If I work with young children, sometimes they might like a little sticker to be able to give to them when you've administered first aid to them as well. Um, but remember, what you have in your first aid kit is going to be what you need in your workplace. You know, people that work with young children might even have thermometers in their uh, first aid kit just to monitor someone's temperature and then maybe send them home if they are getting too, um, too unwell to actually be in your workplace. Now, if I was going on holiday, I would also put in some antihistamines because I do get hay fever quite a lot. I would also put in some paracetamol and ibuprofen that I'll be using for my personal self and for my family. Yeah, I wouldn't be putting that into a workplace and I wouldn't be giving it to friends. This would be for my personal use, the medication I might have if I was going on holiday. But most of the places I go on holiday, you tend to get that medication in that country. So I'm not necessarily going to be worried too much. If I do travel somewhere um, where there's maybe not access to a chemist um, or medicine easily, I might also carry some tablets if I get an upset stomach and for diarrhea maybe as well. So I might carry things like that depending on the country that I'm going to visit. But it's always good to carry something with you. So on every holiday, I always take some sort of face shield, whether it's a little keyring version, and I always carry a dressing and also a pair of gloves, just in case I did have to administer first aid to myself or to somebody else um, that I might be helping. Thanks for listening, guys. Please do hit that subscribe button because I do post weekly videos and your help and support is greatly appreciated. And don't forget to leave a comment below of any other videos you might like me to cover in the upcoming weeks.